Hi, my name is Jan van Seil, and today I will give you my personal take on what happened to me when it comes to Bell's palsy. Now, what is Bell's palsy? Now, palsy means a paralysis. So, Bell's palsy, Bell's was the guy who actually realized what's going on, and it's named after then Mr. Bell. Now, Bell's palsy, in my case, affected my left side. It's a facial paralysis, and it's a normally cranial nerve number seven. And what actually happens is that the nerve from your brain, which gives instructions to your face on the left side, gets paralyzed. It's a temporary uh, paralysis, um, but it can actually have long-term consequences. Now, I've had... The Bell's palsy happened to me about 16, 17 years ago. And you can see that my face on this side is actually swollen today and it's slightly red. Now, it hasn't been like this for the past two months. Uh, I was actually quite surprised last night when this started happening because I thought I'd actually had this problem, which I've had now for many years, under control. Now, what actually happened to me? This is my own personal experience. And yes, you can read about these things in a book, but until you actually go through it yourself or uh, feel it in your body or in your cells, you don't actually really understand what's going on. Um, and in our practice, we are very uh, solution-driven. And as I said, I'd like to call my subscribers visionaries because we'll try to try and prevent problems uh, that you might be able to prevent as you grow older because a lot of these things seem to happen as you grow older. Now, what led to my Bell's palsy? Previous to having developed Bell's palsy, uh, I was a little bit ill. Uh, my immune system was run down. Uh, I was a bit stressed, didn't sleep well, and it was winter, and somebody actually broke into our practice. And I was standing there, I got a call, and the alarm went off, and I had to go through to the practice early morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, and it was pretty, pretty cold. I was standing there in the cold, waiting for the police, um, which didn't arrive immediately. To make a long story short, eventually I decided, well, I'll just going to do something else, and um, the day carried on, fixed the windows, etc. And that night I was sitting at home and I was actually trying to call my wife. We had, uh, we have got a family whistle uh, and uh, I tried to actually whistle and I couldn't whistle. It was the strangest feeling ever. So that's the first thing that you will notice if you have Bell's palsy is that your mouth muscles, you can't actually drink tea or coffee without spilling because that small little muscles that actually closes your lips isn't working. So you have to actually drink anything with a straw. Um, now, the first thing most people do is they actually, like in my case, you go, is it a stroke or is it something else? Now, I knew that it was most likely Bell's palsy, but I still actually found a doctor friend of mine and we went through and he just double-checked me. Now, I straight away knew what I had and I knew what to do at that stage, but I still did not do the 100% correct thing. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get to your doctor, which will normally prescribe something like prednisone. Um, it's a steroid. In actually, it will reduce the swelling of those facial muscles, uh, and you need to do this pretty promptly. So normally you have about two days. That's your window of opportunity where you have the least long-term problems. You have to react within two days. So the standard approach these days is you want to have steroids, you want to have prednisone. You also might consider some antivirals as well. And in my case, I also did some physio. Um, so I did all the correct things. I knew uh, what was going on. Uh, but I still don't actually didn't do the 100% correct thing, which I think now, with hindsight, I should have done. 
The one thing which I did not do, and I, nobody told me about this, it's not written up anywhere, it's my own personal um, theory on why I'm still having problems many, many years later, is that when you have Bell's palsy, your jaw actually hangs, your muscle hangs, your face hangs. It hangs because there's no actually uh, any nerve supply to the facial muscles or those tendons. So those tendons on this side actually stretched. Uh, the tendons stretched, uh, my face sagged, it hanged, I couldn't speak properly. I couldn't drink uh, water or coffee. Uh, normally, I had to use a straw with everything. But the most important thing is I actually couldn't blink as well. Now, that is one of the most important things which you don't realize. And again, as optometrists, we know these things that when you have Bell's palsy, your automatic blinking system gets shut down. So you can still blink. But every time you blink, you have to actually think, blink, think, blink. And your eye blinks a lot. It blinks a lot. And I forgot, literally in the first couple of days, I forgot to think, blink. And then I would like just look at something and I would go, but I can't see nothing with my left eye. So my left eye because it wasn't blinking automatically, actually dried out. And that is one of the biggest dangers that you face, is you face a corneal problem, a drying out of your eye. And if you want to just see how quickly your eye responds to not blinking, you are welcome to do the following. Grab hold of your eyelids, Keep them open and try and keep them open like this without blinking for 60 seconds. And you will find that it is pretty difficult to do. It's nearly impossible. But suddenly that reflex, that automatic blinking now totally gets shut down. So that is the, one of the biggest dangers that you can have when you develop Bell's palsy is you can actually have a corneal problem and the eye will actually, literally, you might actually get an infection because every time you blink, there are special tears that's made by your skin which lubricates and feeds the eyes and protects it. Now suddenly that whole system is shut down. You will not know that you are not blinking because that, sh that system, that automatic blinking is shut down. You can still do voluntary blinking, but you cannot do that. Just forget about my eyes. It'll do the work automatically. You can't do that, unfortunately. And one of the other things which I only realized many years later is the fact that this jaw of mine was actually damaged. The nerves was damaged uh, and it also damaged the nerve supply to my saliva gland. Now, if there was one thing that I should have done, and as I mentioned, nobody told me this, is, this is just my own philosophy. At night, when you go and sleep, you need to do the following. You literally need to bandage your chin and your head together so that you can keep your muscles and your tendons together. Because otherwise, when you are sleeping, everything is relaxed and it actually will stretch those muscles and tendons even more. And in my case, I suspect that uh, it never healed properly. So that's the first piece of advice is make sure that you're actually bandaging your head at night so that you can keep everything together until that natural strength and tonus is actually resupplied. Once that nerve starts working, it can be a couple of weeks, can be or sometimes it's intermittent, sometimes it recovers pretty quickly if you are fortunate. But I have seen many patients that years later still have a droopy face or droopy lid. If you look carefully at me, you'll see my left eye also is a little bit droopy. And if I'm stressed, and again, uh, if I develop this type of condition where my face is swollen, then I sometimes can't speak properly. And I also find more discomfort. Now, why has this happened to me? What is going on? 
Now, I suspect, and I've been to numerous doctors over the last 15, 16 years, um, I suspect that the nerve supply to my saliva gland was uh, affected, and my saliva gland actually doesn't work properly. So the saliva that goes out when you eat your food is reduced, the flow is reduced, uh, and the doctor said to me, it's like sludge, that was his words. Uh, and to, again, to make a long story short, uh, after I heard this information, uh, there was various options which the doctors told me I could do, but surgery is not one of them. Uh, it's, uh, I would not advise surgery to be done. So what did I do? Um, logic told me that if I was having too little saliva, uh, and what actually happens is that the saliva becomes thick, and if you drink too little water, so drink lots of water. Make sure you drink lots of water. And also, I actually started sucking a little pill, uh, anything that I could actually stimulate my saliva gland. So my saliva gland on my left side is not fully functional. And this is, this is the longest in 17 years, literally, that uh, my face was not swollen for two months. Uh, but then I had a holiday, and of course, uh, during holidays, you drink a little bit too much, and you have um, some food which you normally shouldn't be eating, and of course, some dessert and chocolates, and now I'm bearing the consequences for that. So you need to be more careful with your diet once you've had Bell's palsy. You might also find that your body is a little bit more allergic, so... There's two reasons why my cheek would actually swell. The first reason would be that the, the saliva excretion is very slow. There's a stone that forms in my, uh, my channel, my salivary gland channel that leads to you, that puts the saliva in your mouth. And that, that blockage, uh, that stone that's in your uh, mouth, when you can actually feel it, if you go inside the mouth, you can actually feel sometimes... Uh, where the salivary gland uh, exits, the, the channel exits into your mouth. Uh, you can actually feel there's a stone or blockage. Um, you can try and do some lemon juice. You know, literally just rinse your mouth at, with some lemon juice because the stone will get dissolved by the lemon juice. Now, unfortunately, that's not no longer an option for me. Uh, I started developing a, uh, an allergy problem to citrus, and I can't do that anymore as well, unfortunately. But anything that's going to affect your water balance in your body will tend to affect uh, the stone formation uh, that will be blocking your saliva gland excretions into your mouth. Now, once that happens, any food that you drink, it can't go through the channel into your mouth. It actually then backfills into your gland and your face stands like that. And, and I'll show you a picture of, uh, one, of, the, of the, one of the instances my face stood like that. Um, to a large extent now, through trial and error, I've actually been able to resolve most of the problems which I've had with my salivary gland. Uh, do not eat bubble gum. You don't want this jaw. Remember, this jaw now is weakened. The muscles is weakened. Uh, the tendons have been stretched. Don't go and eat bubble gum or something that is like very tough or chewy. Uh, excessive pizza. Uh, you know, not a good idea. You're going to find that you're going to have a problem with this joint here. And once you have a problem with that joint, uh, it is serious then. So you don't want to, uh, you want to rather prefer soft food. This is what I found, uh, fish, uh, chicken, uh, lots of veggies, uh, soup. Uh, watch out for too hard stuff. Um, in general, your bite, your ability to bite down on something on your Bell's palsy side has also been compromised as well. And the biggest concern straight away after you've developed Bell's palsy, always remember, watch your eyes. Because if you have an eye problem, you have some serious problems. Uh, yes, and good luck. 
you know, at the end of the day, um, you are today the oldest that you've ever been. Um, make sure that you look after your body and your eyes. And uh, yes, welcome to my channel if you're new here. And I think, as I said, I will call my subscribers from now on visionaries because that is what I feel we are trying to do as you grow older. You want to try and prevent and minimize uh, any vision problems, hearing problems, body problems, and especially pain problems. And always remember that cold, cold is very good. So the moment my cheek is like this, I always do a cold compress. I take a small little packet of frozen veggies and uh, if you have a similar problem like I've got, you will fi find that your cheek is hot. So I would use a uh, cold compress. And sometimes I would also just put some Vicks on that affected side at night. Uh, and sometimes my cheek is so hot actually that the Vicks would actually literally like melt down. But the moment you do that, uh, I find that I have most often just about instant pain relief uh, and it's it's terrible walking around like that uh, you can't cannot eat you are hungry later on but you know that if you eat now your cheeks going to just swell up more stand out uh, and you're just going to have more problems so uh, going without a meal sometimes is not the easiest thing can be good for you as well any questions you want to know about uh, what I did in more detail for my Bell's palsy, you're welcome to contact me.